Hi and welcome to my Unreal Engine 4 how to make a mortar strike tutorial. This should be working as of version 4.22.3. The first thing you might want to do after you create a project, the one I used was uh, first person with starter content, just to get started, will be to go in here and right click and make a new folder. And this will just help you keep track of things. Uh, it's not necessary, but it's nice, otherwise you can just put them in the content folder wherever you'd like. So the first thing we're going to do is right click, and we're going to create three blueprint classes. So this one, to make sure they will all be actors. I have a mortar, right click again, go to blueprint class, and actor, we'll do mortar spawn, and again for the designator. So double click on your mortar and got to bring it back over here. It's not doing what I want. There we go. And to start, we'll click add component and type static mesh. And it should be this one. These other two won't work how you want. And then we will type mortar body. You can name it whatever you want, but this just helps you keep track of it better. And then the first thing you want to do is parent this to make it the root. Like, just click and drag it up onto it. Otherwise, your collisions won't work properly. And then we'll go to the static mesh here, and we'll look for narrow capsule. You can use whatever you want. If you have your own mesh, that works great. And I'm just going to change it to basic floor, so it's a little bit different from the default color. Next, we'll do add component, and we'll type sphere. And look for sphere collision. We'll name this mortar explosion radius. And we'll click Add Component again for Radial Force. And we'll name this Mortar Force. And if you accidentally did it like this and it's parented there, parent it to the body. Uh, it actually probably doesn't matter, but it might, <laughs> like um, with other things. So it's a good habit just to keep in due to parent things where you want them. And then Projectile Movement. And this is what actually gives your mortar movement. Okay, we'll compile. Uh, we're going to set up the collisions on these, so you want to scroll down. Um, probably won't matter because of how this works, but it's usually good to put no. And then for collision presets, go custom. And then we're going to change object type to projectile. And then set it to ignore projectiles. So this is when you spawn in a bunch of mortars, they won't all hit each other. Um, we'll go to mortar, mortar explosion radius. And we'll just set this to no collision, because this is just to help us see what we're doing. And we're also going to move it up. And then before we leave the radius, we'll put this to 500. You can set this to whatever number you want. This is just basically as far as um, how big the explosion will be. We'll click Compile and Save, in case it crashes for whatever reason. <clears throat> Sorry, I should drink more water. Then we'll go to... Actually, we don't need to set any of these. Um, impulse velocity chains, we're going to check that. This makes it more consistent if um, you want it to be more realistic and check the mass of objects. You don't want this on in the mortar. This is in the radial force component. And then we'll go to projectile movement and we'll set this to zero. Just to be sure, I'm pretty sure you won't need it. And if you do have a slower mortar you want later, you can play with the gravity scale. I'm just going to keep mine on one for now. Compile and save again. Go to it. Now we're going to go to the event graph here, and then we'll begin programming this. So we're going to need three variables. So just click this, you'll create one, I'll name the first one damage, and then click the little red line next to it and set it to a float. Then we'll click it again, we'll type speed. So I got to click through something, there we go. And then we're going to click again and name this explosion size. Then we're going to click this and make it a vector. And then click compile and save. We're going to make explosion size 5 by default. Speed at 2000. And damage, I'm just going to set to 10. You can set any of these to what you want. I recommend keeping explosion size at 5. Alright, so from begin play. We're going to need some stuff, so hold control. Actually, you don't need to do with the projectile movement, but you will with, um, <clears throat> with your variables. And drag this in. Then drag from here and type velocity. 
and we're looking for set velocity. Click that, hook up begin play to it. And then we're going to need to bring in mortar force. Drag in there and put radius. Oops, mistyped it. And look for set radius. And drag into there. And then we will drag in the mortar explosion radius. So next, what you'll want to do is, we're going to narrow this box a bit, drag from here, type scaled, and you're looking for get scaled sphere radius. Click that and drag it into radius. From velocity, we'll drag out from there, and put make, and you're looking for make vector. Click that. And then you'll can hold down control and drag speed in. I'm going to move these out of the way. Actually, I'm going to delete them because I don't think we need them. And then you'll put an asterisk or multiplication symbol depending on how you want to look at it. You have float times float. Click that. Set this number to negative 1. And hook that into Z. Then compile and save. Next, we'll need a custom event for what we want to do. So custom event. And then it'll say add custom event. You click that. And we're going to name it explode. If you want to rename this, you can either rename it up here, or you can press F2 on it and type in it. Um, drag from this output and type apply radial damage. And you'll get two. This just depends on how you want to do it. For now, we'll just do apply radial damage. And I'm also going to check do full damage. This just um, all depends on how you want your mortars to work and deal damage to uh, characters in your game or objects. So hold control and bring damage in. Hook it up to damage. Drag from origin. And we're going to type git actor location. And then for damage radius, we're going to once again bring in mortar explosion radius drag from the, the dot and we're going to type scale to look for get scaled sphere radius and plug that in too and then from damage causer probably won't need it but we're going to put a reference to self and I did that kind of quickly so actually I'll do that again drag from here and then type self and it should yeah say get a reference to self next we're going to bring in mortar force drag from here and type fire. You should see fire impulse. Click that. Oops, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> now we're going to type play sound at location. Spawn emitter at location. And then destroy actor. Then just connect these all together. Um, for sound, make sure you use Explosion Q, or it'll have no sound fall off. If you just use the sound itself, you might want to eventually create your own, because this is kind of quiet. Uh, next, we will drag from location and type Get Actor Location again. And then plug that into location over here as well. We also will click here, click Explosion. And that seems to be everything for that function. There's one last thing we gotta do to make this work though, in which we'll go and click mortar body and scroll all the way down until you see all these events. And it should say on component hit, click that. And then we will drag, I'm gonna put it over here so it's easier to see. Just drag from here and type explode. And you'll notice it says call function. So whenever it gets hit, it's just gonna it's gonna do whatever this says so it's gonna deal damage it's gonna fire its impulse and then it will destroy itself after playing everything so let's go see it work drag it up in the air do it pretty high so we can see it and there's one last thing I forgot to do <laughs> so you notice the explosion was kind of pitiful the the particle so what we gotta do, let's see the scale here, we're gonna bring in our explosion size and put that onto scale. And compile and save, and then we'll do that again. That looks a lot nicer.